do this. <laughs> Bones rattling. So me and Brad's back here in the back with the girls getting ready for worship night. And Anthony, and we Woo. can't wait to see you in just a minute. Hey, Woo. this is behind the scenes. It's what goes on that you don't get to see. It's kind of cool.
running free Cause you set me free The enemy may be all around me But I'm running free Cause you set me free Oh, the enemy may be all around me But I'm running free Cause you set me free The enemy may be all around me But I'm running free Cause you set me free Just like those lyrics of that song just said, that we are here tonight. This band and this praise team are here tonight to use our praise to fight the battles that lie in front of us. And one of my most favorite stories of Scripture that elaborates about our praise as a weapon and how so many times we try to fight a battle that is not ours and we try to pick up weapons to fight that battle that God never intended to be fought with and this this book in 2nd Chronicles of the Bible chapter 20 illustrates this story incredible There's a king named Jehoshaphat, which was the king of Judah. And there was a vast army gathering. And this vast army has been marching upon the kingdom of Judah. And a messenger had come to King Jehoshaphat. And he said, King, an enemy is in the kingdom. An enemy is already approaching. They're in our land already, God. King, what are we going to do? And right away, the king was terrified. Right away, Jehoshaphat was overcome with worry and fear and anxiety. But he knew what to do. Even in the midst of his worry and fear, he knew the place that he had to turn was to God. Just like many of, of you know exactly where to turn in the midst of your worry and your fear. Some of you are doing that right now. And so Jehoshaphat came to the temple. He wanted to be in the presence of God. And as he came into the temple or the presence of God, other people, other of God's people in the city began to, to congregate around the temple when they heard about the enemy approaching. And I want to read you part of this story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat comes to the temple. He gets before the presence of God. And he prays. O oh Lord God our, of our ancestors. Now, before I get into this, I want to make sure that you rem remember. Make this prayer personal. Make it relevant in the moment that you're living in. Make it relevant to the times that we're all living in. Put what we're facing right now into this story and it becomes so personal. You see, pray, he, oh Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one no one, no man, no enemy can stand against you, God. Our God, did, did you not drive out those who lived in this land? Did you not give this land to our ancestor Abraham? 
He said, God, did you not before us, did you not whenever we faced, listen to this, God, did you not whenever we faced calamity, whenever we faced such difficult times like war, like plagues and diseases and famines, were you not the one that we came to and we stood before in your presence, God, where your name is honored? Lord, we cry out to you right now. Lord, in our homes, we cry out to you right now. In this, in this sanctuary, God, we cry out to you right now. Save us, God, from this enemy. Save us from what Satan has formed against us. God, we, be, we believe then and we believe now as we cry out to you, you will hear us, God, and you will rescue us from the hand of our enemy. Jehoshaphat continues to pray. He says, oh, oh God, will you not stop them, God? Will you not stop this enemy? God, I recognize, we recognize right now. It's where so many of us have been living in our lives. It says, God, we recognize right now when we stand face to face to this enemy. God, I recognize I am powerless, God. God, I'm powerless against this mighty army. God, I'm powerless against this enemy that is attacking us. God, I don't know what to do. How many times have you saw and heard yourself repeat those same words? God, I am powerless against this. God, I don't know what to do. God, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat says, God, I'm coming to you because I don't know what to do and I need your help right now, God. God, we're coming to you in the midst of our lives saying God we're powerless against this we don't know what to do and we're coming to you for help God and as Jehoshaphat is praying what begins to happen in the community of believers that are standing around what is going to begin to happen I believe in what I'm encouraging you to do right now in the homes that all of of our church in the community of other bodies of believers are in your house right now watching this it says as Jehoshaphat is praying it says all the men begin to stand up do you see that they're listening to Jehoshaphat pray and then the men were filled with the Spirit of God. And they began to stand up in the gathering. I believe that men are standing up right now in their living rooms. And it says that in this gathering, as the men were standing up, along with their babies, and along with their children, their kids, and their wives. It says and as they stood in the presence of God, the Spirit descended upon them. And he said, listen, all of God's people. This is what God is telling us today. He says, don't be afraid. Do you hear that? Don't be afraid and not another moment in your life. Drop it right now. Let go of it right now. In your living room, wherever you're watching, at your desk, at work, in your car, drop it. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Stop it. Don't go another single day accommodating and living with that fear and that discouragement in your life. He says, this mighty army, this enemy that you're facing right now, and the battle that you're facing is not yours, but God's. Do you believe that right now? Do you believe that the battle that we are facing is not God's and we are not going to conquer it on our own power, but by the power and by the hand of God that this enemy that we face will be defeated? We stand and we claim that and we proclaim that with our praise in the presence of God tonight. That we already, in the midst of our praising, that the enemy that we're facing is already defeated. Listen to what he says. He's looking at God's people in verse 17 and he says, He says, you're not going to need to fight this battle. You don't need to fight. He says, I just need you to take your positions of praise. Are you, are you ready to stand wherever you're at and take your position of praise? This is your battle position. 
He says, take your positions of praise and then stand still. I don't need you to do anything. I don't need you to move. I don't need you to pick up weapons. I don't need you to try to do it on your own strength. I need you to believe in me. I need you to stand up where you are. Take your positions and watch the victory that God is about to have. Praise God for that. Man. He says, watch the victory because he is with you, God's people. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against that enemy tomorrow. For God is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat, after he had said that, he had humbled himself and bowed himself before the Lord. And as he knelt down to pray before the people, other people and the men started bowing and praise, praying with their leader, believing that God was going to move. Do I have some godly men right now watching this who will join us in bowing in prayer because your faith says that God is going to have the victory and you believe it and the actions of your praise demonstrate it right now. And it says as these men and the king bowed down and prayed before the, before the Lord, people started standing to their feet and started rejoicing and started praising God for the victory that hadn't even happened yet, but they were believing Him. Are you standing right now praising Him and rejoicing Him for the victory that is going to come before it ever happens? That is the demonstration of our faith and our belief in God tonight. He goes on to say, He says, he bowed down. And then other men of, of Judah began to stand and praise. It says, early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness. They were just in the wilderness. They weren't to the battlefield yet. They weren't eye to eye to the enemy yet. And as they were walking through the wilderness... King Jehoshaphat stopped and he said, hang on, fellas. Boys, stop just a minute. I remember that last night we stood at the temple and we stood in the presence of God and we prayed and we praised Him and we shouted shouts of praise to our God and God said, stand still. The battle is not yours but mine. All I need you to do is, take, is to stand and take your positions and let me fight this battle. So I imagine as they're walking through that wilderness, he looks at them and he says, put down your weapons. All those swords and things and shields that you're carrying, we're not going to need them in this battle because our God goes before us. And he's going to fight this battle on our behalf. And he says, listen to the army. He says, listen to you tonight. He says, all you've got to do for this battle is believe in the Lord your God. All you got to do is believe in the Lord your God. And if you believe in the Lord your God, then when we face this with this enemy, when we come face to face with this enemy in the valley, your belief in God will give you the courage to stand still and stand firm in the face of the enemy. Even though you don't have your shields, even though you don't have your weapons, you're still able to stand with courage because you're not fighting with those weapons. And I love this. This is where it gets good. After talking to his soldiers and his army and the people that was with him, you know what the king did? He said, we're still in the wilderness. We're not even to the battlefield yet. But here's what we're going to do. King Jehoshaphat began to appoint singers. Yeah, singers. King Jehoshaphat began to point praisers. And he says, here's what I want to do. Before we start marching, and, and before we continue to march through the wilderness to the battlefield, I, what I want to do is I want to put the front line of our army, the front line of this battle is going to be all those that are singing praises to our Lord. That is the front line of the battle. Our praisers are going to fight this battle. 
Our praisers are going to go. Our singers are going to go before the army. And it's that the power of, the, of God that we're calling on in our praise that will defeat this enemy. And they started walking in the wilderness. They started marching in the wilderness without their weapons. And all they were doing was this massive group of people were praising and worshiping God and all of the faith that they had already claiming the victory that they knew their God had already conquered before them. And as they were marching through that wilderness and as they got to the overlook of the valley where the enemy was already at. And it says, as, it says in the very moment that they began to sing in the wilderness before they ever got to the battlefield. When they began to sing in the wilderness and praise God before they ever came face to face with the enemy, it says that the, it says that the enemy turned on itself. And the Ammonites and the Moabites in the valley started killing each other. And you have this massive group of people standing and marching and praising God. And you have the front line of this army. No one ever seen anything like it. They're not carrying weapons and they're not carrying swords. They're just carrying their faith and they're demonstrating it through their praise. And as they get to that overlook, singing praises to their God, they look down into the valley and the enemy is already dead. Woo! Can you feel that, church? It says you praised and you marched in the wilderness before you ever got to the battle. But you started praising him in the midst of that. And before you ever got there, God already conquered the enemy. And we're claiming that. And we're taking our battle positions right now because we know that God says, I need you to stand with praise and believe in me. And that is all you need for this battle because it is not yours, it is mine. And I will fight this battle for you. Do you believe that, church? He goes on and he says, They come in back into the city and they're praising and they're worshiping because God has delivered them. Do you believe in that deliverance right now? It may not be exactly what we're going through, but I believe that you're standing right there. Wherever you're at, wherever you're watching it, it doesn't matter who is watching you. It doesn't matter who is around you. That right now, if you feel the presence of God come upon you, if you feel the presence of God consume you and fill you right now, respond to it. Praise Him in this moment. Say, thank you, Lord. Lift your voice in praise. Shout praises to Him. Humble yourself before God right now in your floor at your office desk. Pull over on the side of the road and give Him a moment of praise. He is worthy of that. Whatever battle you're facing right now, God is telling you, listen, the battle is mine. You fight through my strength, through your praise. We're going to sing this song tonight. God, this is how I fight my battles. God, I fought this battle through the demonstration of my faith, through me taking up my battle position with my hands high or my knees bowed, shouting praises and singing praises to you, Jesus. Are you ready to fight this battle tonight, church? Are you ready to fight your battle tonight? Are you ready to join together with all the other bodies of, of Christ and all the other individuals right now watching this this video all other small groups that are standing to their feet right now praising you Jesus that you go before us and that no weapon no disease no famine no war no enemy formed against us will prosper let's sing let's worship him right now in this place right where you're at Lift your voices and praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Move right now, God. Have your way right now, God. Spirit, make yourself known right now. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this song says, there's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It says your body and your blood was shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. And I believe you've overcome. And I believe and I will raise a song of praise. May we serve a God that is for us tonight.
And you know, like Pastor Sam has said for weeks now, it doesn't have to be awkward. It doesn't have to be awkward or weird in your living room. He is worthy of the praise no matter what. That's where I find my most intimate times of praise sometimes is right there in my living room when nobody's around. Sometimes I just get on my knees or I'll lift my hands and my kids will, will look at me and they're watching Daddy praise the Lord. That's what it's about. We serve a God that is for us tonight. He's for us every single day of our lives. He wants to see us win that victory. He's already won the victory, church. Help us declare that tonight. This is how we're going to fight our battles. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battle. There's a table.
sing this chorus out one more time church I don't want all of you just to sing it out with us tonight this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight come on every voice lifted tonight this is how I fight my battles this is how I this is how I fight my battles yeah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I, one more time. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my Amen with us.
just encourage you to close your eyes tonight and just worship with us. In the 
is weak will you help me see you were all that I need you were all that I need Lift up a song to him right there in your living room tonight.
God, give us a heart abandoned after you, Lord. What a journey of faith that we've all been through. Thank you for the journey, Father God. And we know that it's not over yet. You know, I've said it before, God has a purpose and a plan for each and every person watching tonight. He is not finished with you yet. If he called you for a purpose, he will fulfill his plan in you. He's a good, good father tonight. We thank you for joining us for our worship night. And God bless you guys. I'm just going to pray us out. We love you all. We miss you so much again. We can't wait till we can gather. We know it's coming really soon. Here in just a couple few weeks, we'll be able to gather again and worship. In, a, in the atmosphere together corporately, and we just can't wait. We are thrilled. But Father God, we thank you for your presence here tonight. We thank you for what you're doing all across this place, all across this land, all across this state and county. We thank you how you're bringing unity to the churches in this county, Father God. We thank you how you're bringing unity to every believer in this town, Lord. We just pray that revival would hit from Crossville and pour out, Father God that your presence would be known in this place, in this town. Remind us daily, Lord, to stay in your word. Remind us to share the gospel with everybody we come in contact with, everywhere we go. Now that we're on the backside of this virus, Lord, we're just so thankful. We're thankful all through it, but we're so thankful that it's ending we're thankful that you've had your hand on us the entire time. We have trusted you, Lord. We believe you have a plan. We know you're bringing people back to you, bringing the children back to the Father's heart. And we just thank you and we give you praise for everything you're doing. Everything. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we praise your name. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you.